Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be making some unpaper towel rolls. If you don't know what unpaper towels are, they're just a reusable, almost like a towel that you can just reuse in place of paper towels. So it's to save money and to just live a more sustainable life. Um, we're going to also be trying out to do a supplementation one as well. You know I got to tie a supplementation in. Um, so if you want to see how to do it, just keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Leslie. My channel is all about crafting on a budget. I do cricket, supplementation, and sewing videos. So if any of those things interest you, please consider subscribing, joining my YouTube family, and let's just jump into this video. So for today's project, you're going to need a acrylic ruler that is 12 and a half by 12 and a half you're going to need some flannel fabric this is from joann's if you're going to do sublimation you're going to need some fleece fabric this is no peel fleece fabric from joann's i am going to just be making my design 12 and a half by 12 and a half and i printed it out on my sawgrass and my sawgrass can only print eight and a half by 14 so i am just going to tape these together to make my design you are also going to need some cam snaps i got these off amazon they came with the, the press um and it came in a bunch of different colors i have all sorts of colors here so you can get these on amazon i'll have them linked down below you need your rotary cutter or some fabric scissors, whichever one you prefer. If you use rotary cutter, you need a rotary cutter mat. You're gonna need some thread that matches your design. I really like Gooderman thread. You're obviously gonna need your heat press and your sewing machine. We're gonna start off by just trimming down our design. These look a little, hopefully they don't end up subbing differently. This is a sub. I don't know why my ASO package two different weights got the 125 and the 120 came in here. So hopefully they don't look too different when I press them. I'm just going to take a paper trimmer and I'm going to trim them down so that I can tape them. Once you have your design trimmed, you're just going to line up. I like to go in with some scissors and just trim off any fuzzies that may be on the edge of my paper just to make sure that I don't have any any white lines when I press. So we're gonna line it up. So once you have your design all lined up and taped on the back along that seam, we're gonna take our fabric and we are going to lint roll it. So now you're gonna take your design and you're gonna place it down. I'm gonna place it as close to the edge as I can. I'm gonna leave a little room around it and I'm just gonna take my rotary blade. I'm making sure that I'm not putting my design on the salvage. And I'm just gonna take my rotary blade and I'm gonna cut around it. And now I'm just gonna take my heat tape and I'm going to tape it down to the fleece. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the heat press and we're gonna press this at 385 degrees for 60 seconds. Some butcher paper on top to protect the top of my heat press and I'm just gonna press down. So this is how it looks now. You can't even tell where the paper was, only a little bit by like the pressure. But other than that, just one seamless design. So we're gonna put this to the side for now. We're gonna work on cutting our fabric to the size that we need it. So we're gonna take our 12 by 12, 12 and a half by 12 and a half ruler, and we're gonna use that to cut through this you can cut through as many layers as you feel like comfortable with um i think i'm only going to cut through two layers at a time so we got our fabric we're going to take our ruler and we're going to put it down 
I'm gonna bring it as close to the salvage in the corner as I can get to. I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut this out. And with the size towel that I got, I should be able to make six out of that towel. So in there I have two 12 by 12 pieces. You can make these whatever size you want. I'm just gonna do 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So it'll be about 12.25 with the seam allowance and all that. So I'm just going to cut 12 of these. And if you want, you can take your fabric and you can double fold it. Take your ruler, make sure that you can fit it. And then you can get four, but you have to make sure that you have uh, your rotary blade is sharp enough. So now with folding it like that, I have four of them now. So I'm just gonna cut the rest of these. Now we're just gonna get our towels and we're gonna start cutting these up. So these, I will not cut in two layers because this is pretty thick. And that's gonna be really hard to cut in multiple layers with your rotary, your rotary cutter. So I'm gonna do one by one. I'm not gonna use this part right here with the design. So I'm just gonna leave that to the side. I mean, you can if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna line it up with the bottom before reaching the bias binding that is right there. And I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm gonna just press a little hard, but not too hard. And it should cut. When you're done, you're gonna have this. Man, these are really nice. These are Target towels and they're like thick like nice thick and absorb it wow i need to give myself some of these towels so i'm gonna cut 11 more of these okay so for this part we're gonna need our walking foot because we are going through a lot of layers you need some corresponding thread in your bobbin and on your thread spool make sure that you leave an opening and because this is so many layers you know we're doing about i don't say about this much so that you can get all those layers in so just wanted to remind you about that i'm gonna do it with my fleece on the bottom so that my terry cloth doesn't get stuck in my machine um but i do have my markings in the bottom so i'm just going to be paying attention to those markings of where i wanted to start i'm gonna take out my pin and I'm going to just lower my presser foot. I think I'm going to come out a little bit more this way. Lower my presser foot. I think I'm going to increase my stitch length a little bit. I think I'm going to do 4.5 by maybe 3 just so that it doesn't skip as much. I'm going to back stitch. Make sure I back stitch when I start. Make sure you take out your pins when you get to it. Make sure you're paying attention to your corner. And when you're about, we're doing this at one fourth seam allowance. So when you're about um, one fourth from your corner, make sure you stop the machine. And then you're gonna raise your presser foot, leave your needle down, raise your presser foot, put your foot back down. Make sure your layers are arranged correctly and then just start going. Again, when you get to a pin, you're going to take that pin out, adjust your layers as you go. And you can put your hand in the back to kind of help you guide it. Once you get to the point where you want to stop, make sure you back stitch. So that when you're flipping it inside out, um, you're not ripping those seams. So now we're going to want to trim all around that seam allowance. And in the corners, just make sure that you get as close as you possibly can. You can use pinking shears or you can use fabric scissors, whatever you would like. Just make sure you don't clip the stitches that you just did. Make sure that you do not trim your opening. Don't trim where you have that opening 
So I'm just going to take my scissors when I get close to that opening and just, and then where this other side is, I'm just clipping down and then so that I have room to go this way. So now that we have all of our edges trimmed, we're going to flip it inside out, go through that opening. We're going to stick our hand to the furthest corner and we're going to bring that in. You want to be gentle with this. You don't want your stitches to kind of rip out. And then you're going to use a tool like a chopstick or something like that. And you're going to stick it in and be very gentle. This is, you don't want to rip those stitches out and you're just poking out your corner like that. Now it should be looking like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that we're going to use our fingers and we're going to kind of fold that inside. This is where clips come in handy because this is such a bulky part that pins might have a hard time holding it down. And now we're going to top stitch all the way around. Um, you want to do as close as to the corner. So maybe like about one eighth of an inch all the way around. So again, put your fleece towards the bottom so that this doesn't get stuck in your machine. And just line, make sure that as you're going, you're kind of bringing the terry cloth part a little back with your fingers. Okay, so once you have top stitch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a line. We're gonna do like an X. You're gonna sew from corner to corner this way horizontally and vertically from making an X and it's easier if you grab both sides and kind of guide it through and now we're going to move to putting our cam snaps and I'm going to show you how to make these into one roll that is going to look like a paper towel roll so we're going to put each of our snaps and we're going to put them at half an inch from the top and half an inch from the side. So I'm just gonna take the tool that came with my cam snap thing to make a hole and I'm just gonna pierce through my fabric. Just like that. Comes out on the other side. And I'm gonna do that for all my holes. We're gonna put our caps on the right side here put them on top so we got it through now we're gonna take two of these the male ones we're gonna take two of the male ones and we're gonna stick that through you want to make sure that you got that snap on there really good now we're gonna take the two that came with our snap cap with our cam snaps I don't know why I keep calling it that and we're gonna put that through and then we're gonna press it really, really hard, like as hard as it goes. And that's going to flatten that pointing part that you saw, this pointy part. So again, you're gonna put it in through there, through your hole, make sure it comes to the other side. Kind of push some of that terry cloth out of the way, just like that. Take your male part and put it in and then press down as hard as it will go all the way. And there's your snap. So now we have two of our snaps on. So we're just going to do the next one just like that. We're just going to do the male parts first. Um, so we're just going to grab... All of our towels and we're gonna do exactly the same just on the right side punning all of the male parts which are the studs we're gonna put all of those on them okay so now that we have all of our caps and studs on the right side we're gonna go to our left side and these we're gonna do a little bit different so you're still gonna measure the half an inch down and half an inch from the side to make your hole and once you have your hole we're going to do this a little different we're going to flip it over and you're going to face the terry cloth way instead you're going to take the the pointy part 
and we're gonna stick that through where we made our hole again you're gonna push it down to get anything out of the way you're gonna take the female part which looks like this you're gonna take that part and you're gonna put it on top hold it take your pliers and slide it in there and then you're gonna press down just like you did for the other ones all the way down just like that you're gonna do that for all of your pieces so you should have the solid piece on one side two of them on one side and then the female parts on the two other sides and you can just check them snap them to make sure they're going to be able to snap if you don't press your pliers down all the way it's not going to allow fully smash that middle part and it's not going to allow it too too close and snap so i'm going to go back and trim any threads that i haven't already and then i'm also going to go back and i search some of mine just so i searched some of mine so i need to go in and get rid of serger tails this is what my serger tails look like so there's two ways you can get rid of your serger tails you can use some tapestry needles these needles that look like this i have a set that comes in a bunch of different sizes you can use that and a needle threader and you're gonna thread those tails through there so i'm gonna show you how to do that so basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this tapestry needle i'm gonna put it in through my seams and I'm gonna leave this end part sticking out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my threader I'm gonna stick it through grab that serger tail and just bring it through pull the rest through with my fingers and then I'm gonna pull the needle through and then just pull like that to make sure it's all the way through once it's through i'm gonna take my scissors and i'm gonna just clip it and then i'm gonna take this fray check and i'm just gonna put a few drops right there and that's that's it now another way to get rid of your serger tails would be like you take your tail and you bring it over existing surging right here and bring it over and you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to do some small zigzags across and that's going to secure it there and then you can just clip it so i'm going to get rid of all my serger tails so i'm going to lint roll all of these and get rid of all my serger tails and then i'll be back to show you how to roll it up to look like a paper towel roll now that we've cut all our serger tails we've lint rolled all of our paper towels um we're gonna start putting them together i'm doing two rolls so each one's about six of these it's my beautiful sublimation one i love how that one looks okay so now i'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to roll it with the terry cloth facing up. Making sure that when I reach the end of one, I bring the other one forward. And, oh, that's so beautiful. And it's done. Have yourself a paper towel roll. And then you can unclip it and use it and then throw it in your washer and wash them and reuse them again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, this took, I'm not even gonna lie, this took a lot of work to do, but I think it's worth it. I love how it turned out. I especially love how this sublimated one turned out. It's such a beautiful color, like... I just I just love it just be careful with your cam snaps make sure you press them all the way and press them correctly again make sure that when you are sewing these um, that your fleece is down on your machine don't sew with the terry cloth down or your machine's gonna eat it up and 
that happened a lot to me. We're gonna do the serger, which I did do for some. Same thing, make sure your fleece is facing down. Um, I mean your flannel is facing down or your fleece if you're doing sublimation. I like both versions, the sold one and the, what I liked about the serger one is that it kind of flattened it out and made it less bulky, but I like the look of the ones that are not serged that just have the top stitching on them. But these are great. They're gonna be super absorbent. And I'm really excited about these. I'll keep you guys updated on these. Let me know if you guys try these down below. Have you ever heard of unpaper towels? And if you have, would you make some? Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. And be on the lookout. Big things are coming. And I'll see you in my next video.